Well, good morning and welcome to the Technology Source Virtual Roundtable. I'm Rob Olson, Chief Revenue Officer at Technology Source. Each month, we review unique services that have added tremendous value to our clients' business. Today is no exception, as we welcome Consensus and discuss their EFEX corporate solution. So a little bit about us before we get into the meat of today's meeting. Um, we're a technology advisory firm. We work alongside of your team to create best in breed solutions. We represent over 500 providers in managed IT, cybersecurity, telecom, and mobility. We work closely with our partners to reduce operational expenses and improve efficiencies while helping to deliver an outstanding experience for their customers. There are several ways that we add value. Talk about them real quick here. So one is escalation support. Implementations in, in the IT world uh, and the technology world are not always great. And we're there to help with that, uh, escalation support should you need us. We do bring a lot of leverage as we're a distributor. And all of our providers, of course, want us to recommend them to our clients. So that provides us with some additional leverage that our clients would normally not have on their own. Um, recommendations are something we take very seriously. We actually have a 15 point provider selection checklist that we go through to ensure that every recommend re recommendation we make uh, makes sense for your solution. Uh, negotiation. So this is an area where we get asked a lot of times, you know, go get some bids. And, and what we found, what I found is that uh, no one is going to give you the lowest price uh, on a bid, unless you're General Motors and you're buying 200,000 of something. They just don't care. Um, and so we we have developed a really great process for negotiation where we've taken 20, 30, even 60% off the uh, the bid price for our clients. So, and a lot of that comes from my background, being in executive leadership roles for other companies and providers and understanding the behind the scenes uh, culture of how things work in finance. Um, another, another benefit of uh, how we assist our clients is with budget creation. We're going to talk a little bit about that actually today. How, how, how are audits on existing technology can actually pay for the solution that you need to add to your business? And then lastly, just QBRs, quarterly business reviews that help us align with your objectives, your projects, to ensure that we stay involved as, as your trusted advisor and, uh, and partner. All right. Last slide here, 20 years in business, 4,000 clients. We operate in 60 different countries, and we've got 350 trusted advisors working alongside of us across the U.S. That brings us, ding, 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 to the panel. we got some great folks here. Uh, Bill French, Partnerships Manager, EFAX Corporate. Go ahead, wave, Bill. <laughs> Tony Lambert, Global Partnerships, EFAX Corporate. Where are you at, Tony? There he is. And Nick DePasquale, Director of Enterprise Sales, EFAX Corporate. Uh, guys, if you don't mind, uh, give us a little background. We'll start with uh, Nick and then Tony and then Bill. Tell us a little sure. bit about yourselves and your and your role at EFAX Corporate. Sure. Thank you, Rob. So Nick DePasquale, I'm the Director of Enterprise Sales. So I would be someone that would face uh, with customers and, and help them select the best solution for their needs. I've been in the world of facts, believe it or not, for 40 years. Started when I was five years old, uh, but I have literally sold hardware, software implementations. In the last 20 years, I have been with eFax Corporate. Uh, and over those years, be it hardware, software, and of course now cloud, I've helped design large fax implementations for legal, financial services, and we've had a big focus the last several years on healthcare. So I do bring a, a lot of knowledge to the industry and uh, very excited to tell you more about what we can offer you as a customer. Did I hear you say 20 years, Nick? 20 years at, at uh, EFAX Corporate. That's correct. 20 years last November. That doesn't exist anymore. You know, we see it, resumes all the time and people at that, you know, the most veteran people we'll see is a couple times, sometimes is a couple of years. Uh, the staff at our company averages 10 to 15 years of being with us too. So I would um, say one last thing, Rob, my youngest daughter has had more jobs. She's 28 years old than I've had my entire career. So it's a little different world now. Well, it's great to have an expert on the call and it's great to have an expert talking to our clients. We appreciate the depth of knowledge you, you bring to the table. So uh, Tony, give us a little background uh, about yourself and your tenure at EFAX. Hey, Rob. Yeah, thank you for the time this afternoon. Um, so I'm Tony Lambert. I'm a Global Alliance Manager with Consensus. I've been with Consensus now about two and a half years. Uh, prior to that, my background um, was in telecommunications, pretty much my whole adult career. 
So since I started with AT&T like back in 99, so I worked for AT&T, Verizon. I was a senior director at Lumen for 10 years before coming over to Consensus. So yeah, I appreciate the time and the opportunity to chat with your clients today. And then Bill. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Bill French, I lead our partnerships team here at Consensus. Uh, I was actually part of a team, Summit Healthcare, that we acquired uh, just over two years ago now. That's brought a lot of new technology and a new way to transmit fax data, both discreetly and the fax itself. Uh, prior to that, I've been about 15 years in the healthcare finance space. I uh, did a couple of years at Meditech Consulting, uh, deployments of EHRs, things like that. And interested to talk to you guys today and learn more about the, uh, share more about the ways to uh, transmit faxes versus just grabbing them off the age old fax machine. Yeah, and researching your company, there's been quite a few acquisitions. You, I think you've acquired everybody that you can possibly acquire in this business for faxing. It's it's been it was interesting to take a look at that uh, that past uh, resume. So we'll go ahead and get into some of the questions. Um, I know we've got a few folks that are joining us from the healthcare side, so this will be very interesting for them. Why should healthcare organizations and company in the companies in the legal and financial industries consider cloud facts what's in it for them so there's been a, a very strong trend particularly in healthcare over the last several years and i would tell you when i first started a consensus uh, efax corporate 20 years ago we did quite a bit in financial services and legal as well and there's some common threads there uh, security capacity resiliency these are three keys in the world of facts. And it's a scenario, do you want to manage this yourself? There's so many things on an IT manager's plate. Do you want to be managing facts? There's so many components, so many things you need to investigate if there's an issue. It could be hardware related. It can be software related. It can be telecommunications related. And something that really resonates with our customers now, and it is something I'm sure we'll dig into a little further, is the migration to SIP. So facts was designed to run an analog circuits. And I, as you know, I've been doing this quite a long time. In the world of SIP, there's a lot of packet loss with fax. And where it really, really impacts customers are on lengthy documents. And you mentioned there's some healthcare providers on this call. They know very well that patient records can run into the hundreds of pages. And you know, particularly when you're talking about oncology, uh, behavioral health, or you get out of hospital systems into the sub at post-acute, we have these lengthy patient records. The failure to transmit these records in a timely manner is patient outcome impacting. It is also revenue, revenue impacting. And of course, clinicians, it impacts them as well. So those are really strong reasons uh, for these organizations to be considering facts. I can tell you have a great market share in all of these verticals. Uh, legal, I would tell you uh, approximately 50 of the ALM, American Lawyer Media, Media uh, law firms are EFAX customers and have been some for 15 years. Yeah, it's an amazing stat. Yep. Yeah. And Rob, I think the TDM decommissioning too that's going on across uh, North America and Canada is pretty significant. It's really causing customers to have to make a decision on how they want to deal with these workflows as it relates to FACS, you know, because when you are talking about whether it was a POTS line or an ISDN PRI, but the operating costs of that going up, you know, by 500% in some cases, or just straight up getting disconnect notices in other cases where they have zero choice, it, it, at that level, it's really impacting all these verticals and that they have to do something. If they were doing it an old traditional way and they haven't already migrated to the cloud, then they have to do something. Right. Agreed. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I won't echo everything Nick and Tony just shared, but yeah, no, it's definitely a hundred percent. I mean, it's a very compelling story for cost saving, system decommissioning, getting it off premise, security headaches and impacts, uh, vulnerability. There's so many things on the security side alone. And then the FTE burden of managing those VMs or infrastructure that they've designated themselves to over the years, the Windows updates, not just strictly the fax environment that they're managing on that infrastructure. So um, there's definitely compelling reasons and ROIs across the board. Yeah, we've seen massive increases in the pricing with AT&T, Windstream, Lumen, which used to be CenturyLink, uh, where POTS lines are going up 125, 200. I, I've seen reports of one uh, of $1,200 um, in certain parts of the country. Uh, I've seen letters go out 
by Lumen stating that they were going to decommission a lot of these copper services by the end of the year. It's been pushed out now. And they're kind of in that same price increase mode as well, where they're just going to price people off the circuits. Uh, so yeah, there's a, there's a big reduction that can be had there um, just on the TDM side. You're absolutely right. And, and we're, and we're seeing it, we're feeling it. Our customers are feeling it. Yeah. And one thing, you know, you mentioned there too, there's obviously a lot of existing infrastructure, a lot of t phone lines that are out there already. Uh, it's not a reboot on the entire, you know, move, you know, you can bring your numbers with you. It's not something where it's, you know, a stick of TNT to your existing environment and you start from scratch. Uh, there's a lot of migration mechanisms and cutovers, porting of your numbers. There's things that go into it that make it a far less painful process with an outcome, you know, that's going to be best for all. Yeah. And the best part is we we manage all of it, right? We can help you move to the new services. We can mm -hmm. help you PFAC solution. So having everything under one roof just makes it a lot smoother and a lot, pain, a lot more, a lot less painless than uh, if you're trying to do this with multiple people helping you. So um, no, I, I think there's a, there's a lot to be said about the cost saving side. And um, I, I, I heard a number somewhere, Tony, I think this was from you that um, clinicians now that are helping on the, especially if they're using a more manual fax, that it takes about eight minutes for someone to pull that fax off the machine walk back to their desk, enter their information into the electronic health record. And that's about 14,000 faxes a month. If you have that person doing nothing more than just entering data into those health records. And at $76,000 a year, those are some expensive faxes, right? So obviously a much more efficient solution. We're going to get deeper into it. You'll, people will have a better understanding of how we're going to make them more efficient as we chat. Um, Let's go on to the next thing. Uh, I think the, that most of us have a very skewed view, view on how simple faxing can be. I mean, I grew up with e-fax and the term e-fax was you, know, you go out and got shareware, right? And you can send a fax and it'll show up in your email and it was really cool, but not not very sexy. But give us an example of what goes into a robust digital fax infrastructure today. Right. And uh, Rob, once in a while, I hear somebody say in a call that this is exciting. And it's rare that facts and exciting are in the same sentence. I can tell you nobody's chasing me down at cocktail parties to learn what's new in the world of facts, but it is an incredibly useful technology. Uh, and you ask what, how simple faxing can be. When you move to the cloud, it is simple because we mentioned all the different components that go into managing your own infrastructure. But when you're using our infrastructure, you're dealing with an organization that has over 100 patents on the technology that has built out a robust infrastructure that's built for resiliency and security and capacity planning. That's a challenge for IT organizations, particularly in the healthcare realm, where they have to plan for peak, right? So typically in healthcare, the first 90 days of the year are very busy. So you have to plan for that peak. And the rest of the year, you have a lot of unused capacity. We've architected our solution, which is running over AWS, to run at 50% capacity at all times. And by the way, we processed about 4 billion pages last year, running at 50% capacity. So they don't have to worry about the capacity planning. We thought of all that. All these different AWS sites are built out for M plus one engineering. It's a high trust certified network as well. All that goes away. We manage the entire process. Your numbers sit in our cloud. We do all the processing, both inbound and outbound, securely in our cloud, and we deliver the faxes to you. So the workflow you're currently using, if you're using email, if you're faxing out of an EHR, if you're receiving into a document management system, we can match all that. We can keep your current workflow the same. What we typically say is we like to lift up what you're doing now, move it to the cloud, and then let's talk about improving workflows. Because something we do consistently hear from the IT managers is we can't disrupt the way people work today. And we respect that, but we also say once we've lifted this into the cloud, let's talk to some of the business leaders and let's see what the life of a fax is and how we can improve that workflow and redeploy people to do something that's a little more productive than manually rekeying information into an EHR, for example. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll go, go ahead, Tom. I, I was just gonna say, I think Nick, you know, nailed it on the head, right? <laughs> You know, when we have the opportunity to just say, hey, look, we can mirror that workflow and then we move it up to our, our SaaS platform and then we have the chance to really show them what we can do with, with the platform eFax Corporate, that's one of the main reasons why customers buy from us is because of the, the depth of the platform and the different solutions that we can bring to the table. 
you know, maybe an example is that a customer, you know, today is getting a, a fax that's coming in on a multifunction printer, and then they're turning around and scanning it and sending it into a file share. Okay, that doesn't take forever. But the fact is with our platform, we can do it and streamline that so that really they don't have to touch that. It just becomes, you know, a natural part of the workflow. It's in the file share and it's and it's printing on the multifunction printer. What is it, 18 seconds to do that versus eight minutes? That's what I heard. Well, that's seconds. that's a little bit of a yeah, that that's more talking about our clarity product, which we'll get to. But yeah, this is just like a simple, you know, this is how as Nick said, the life of the facts, right? You yeah. know, when understanding that, you know, they want it to go in two different places. So we can we can really optimize that and do that for them, you know, with our router software, for example. Right. Yeah, we're we're taking the word facts almost out of the conversation. It's more about the document, more about the data, more about getting it to where it needs to go. So a lot of these examples are saying, hey, we're going to streamline it. So you're not, you know, printing it out, then to scan it back in and go through it, or you're not going to grab it and manually key it in. So like Tony mentioned, our clarity functionality, but then also to industry standards that are not out there forever. You know, whether it's the email, print the facts, but you get into some of the fire resources, newer ways of technology today, you get into HL7, we're giving users way to send us information that can become a fax. So they're not having to go out, look at the radiology report, print it out, scan it. They're able to either pull up the report and then send it as a PDF from there, or they're even able to send us the discrete data that we break down. So it really becomes more about the information and how impactful it can be. And that starts showing an even more tremendous ROI because that is gonna be third-party billing software, third-party materials management, maybe just something as simple as getting patient information within the four walls of the hospital from the surgical team on one system to the EHR that's being used by the predominant uh, part of the hospital. All these different ways can be achieved and that document translation isn't gonna be just by fax, but it'll be uh, the fax mechanism that then brings it forward to a lot of other options for an organization. Good points, good points. All right, on to the next one. There's a lot of talk around the sunset of POTS lines and TDM services. We mentioned this a little bit earlier. This is causing organizations to switch to FACS today. Um, why is that? Can you detail some of the key benefits of the EFACS solution when it comes to TDM? So the key benefit is our infrastructure is now going to be processing all of your FACSs. You're not going to have to move over to a SIP environment. Our network has been optimized strictly for fax. Nothing else runs over it. So we do not have the same issues people have that are trying to manage fax in-house over a SIP environment. So there's the reduction in cost. We touched on it a little bit, right? We know what the cost of these TDM lines and circuits have become, what the POTS line increases. Rob, you mentioned $1,200 a month. I've seen $1,000 a month. Yeah. I was on a call with a partner where their TDM invoice went from $500 a month over six months to $50,000 a month. So the carriers are telling you, we don't want to manage it. We don't want to support it. Get rid of it. The FCC has told them you can exit this business. So they're going to force you to do it one of two ways, either through just shutting you down or making it so painful financially that you have no other choice. The key takeaway here is, and again, in the healthcare environment or anybody that's processing lengthy faxes, managing your own fax infrastructure in a SIP environment is a major headache. It just doesn't work. And it will impact patient outcomes. It'll impact your revenue. And it's really the time to move to the cloud. It's really a unique time in the world of fax. Uh, in that people are really forced to make a decision on, on what direction they want to go. Right. I mean, a lot of the legacy systems that are out there today that were premise based, even some of the larger, the epics, the Meditechs, you know, the EHRs that at their own time were premise based. Uh, a lot of that has moved to the cloud. A lot of other large, you know, pivotal pieces of the ecosystem moved to the cloud. And then you look around and you say, OK, well, something that we're transmitting maybe a million, two million pages a month with. We left in a data center or left in a closet and it's managed by one person that, you know, that's the point of failure is the management by that one person only knowing where it is, the fact that it's on premise and it's tethered to all those analog lines. So you start to see a common theme in a cloud initiative where people want to cloudify or whatever they want to call, you know, their initiative to get to the cloud, to get, you know, processes streamlined, to get costs down. And there's a lot, again, ROI and decommissioning value of uh, the technology that we all know is going away. Uh, so getting ahead of that rather than trap behind the cost and the ec economical ramp for that, uh, there's a lot of pass forward that we can bring the organization. And one last point I'd like to add, Rob, 
is there's been so much acquisition, particularly in hospital systems. So now suddenly you find yourself having to manage two or three different types of fax solutions and multiple EHRs. So here you can consolidate right with eFax. You don't have to worry about capacity. We can integrate with whatever the different applications are. So that's been another benefit, the, the fact that you can go down to just one solution. And we don't just see that in hospital systems. I can tell you we part with a lot of healthcare technology companies, and they're serial acquirers as well. So we're able to move them over to one platform. And again, no concerns about capacity planning, no concerns about security. We have all that covered. Yeah, and because our solution doesn't require any equipment or CPE, you know, it takes all those little things out of the equation, like ATAs or integrated access devices that have to be, you know, managed and can also be a, another point of failure for the facts. So, you know, we're 100% SaaS solution, and that just takes all those potential, you know, problems out of the equation. Yeah, the FCC actually uh, sunsetted POTS lines back in August of 2022. And if you're not worried about the price increases, you should worry about the fact that sunset means they're not going to respond to your trouble ticket, right? So if you have a service issue with that line, they could refuse repair. They may not, but they could refuse repair. So another another reason to think about that. But one other thing I'll share that I don't think most of our listeners are contemplating is the fact that when we pull those old TDM services down and, and bring in replacement services, Oftentimes, we see the cost reduction between the TDM and the new the new services pay for the EFAC solution, which is an exciting part of the story, right? Is that we can, because we're working together with you, we can bring in the replacement services and then help you allocate the savings towards a new solution with EFAC corporate. All right. So in today's market, there are a lot of choices when it comes to cloud fax solutions. Why does EFAX corporate stand out? What makes you different? So one thing I, I mentioned earlier is we have over 100 patents on our technology. We've been in this the longest. We invented this technology. Uh, in addition to that, I mentioned our high trust certification. There are a few, uh, there aren't as many high trust certified organizations in, in the world of fax. Right. Uh, we have partnered with many large healthcare organizations. We have great experience integrating with these large healthcare organizations. As a matter of fact, we're the VA hospital systems faxing partner. That's the largest hospital system in the country. We have a separate instance running an AWS GovCloud that is FedRAMP certified uh, for the VA. So our expertise in fax in general, but particularly in healthcare, I mentioned the expertise in legal and also in financial services where we have gone in and improved different workflows uh, the infrastructure that is global in nature, we have 40, we're in 49 countries and over 4,650 cities. We offer all the compliances you need in the United States. We also uh, are GDPR compliant. Uh, we offer data sovereignty in the United States and the EU and Asia PAC. So this is our core competency. The support model for EFAX is all our own employees is 24 by 7 as well. Yeah, great stuff. Bill, Tony, if anything yeah. No, I mean, there's not much to add that Nick didn't cover there. I mean, that was uh, that was everything with a bow on it. But yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, you know, people, you know, people, you call us up and they say, I want to send effects. And it's like, well, we became the verb. We became that legacy brand, the, the known name. Uh, and then you start exposing all the other technologies that we've layered into uh, the fax offering and fax workflows. It's shown that not only have we tested, tried and true with our network and our certifications over the years, but we continue to advance the technology. Uh, paying attention to high trust HIPAA compliancy for that and other offerings that can bring much more value and impact to the data that's been transmitted for fax for the last, you know, 25, 30 years. Yeah, anytime you own as many key patents as eFax corporate owns, it becomes very difficult for anybody really to compete with you. Um, and I think that's a big challenge. And I think it's one of the big benefits of working with your organization is it's going to work, it's going to work right. And we're customers. Go ahead, go ahead. I just ahead. want to add one, one thing too, is that, you know, when you think about in scope that all of our competitors, if you put them all into one company, they would still be smaller than us, <laughs> right? And, and then you think about the fact that we're publicly traded, we're financially stable, and clearly we're investing in the future of this platform and the way that we're delivering secure messages, right? 
I mean, as Bill mentioned earlier, we're kind of taking the facts out of the story so much as that we're delivering a secure direct message in the way that the federal government agrees that we're, we're checking all the boxes and then working on all, all the different flexible integration options with, you know, different CRMs and ERPs and EHRs so that we're really trying to take the facts out of it and really make it just a stream flow, a streamlined flow of documentation from one place to the next. And, you know, when we, when we get to talking about clarity, I mean, that's a big investment for us, right? But we understand what our customers, what their workflows are and the challenges that they have within them. And we're developing our product around that. Changing our customer outcomes, right? Improving them. Sure thing. I think I think ultimately you've become the uh, the Ronco of the EFAX business, right? Where it's set it and forget it. It's simple. It's easy. It just works. And I, I think in the technology space, rarely do we come across products that are simple and easy, set and forget, right? There's a lot of management, implementation challenges, and we just don't see that with uh, consensus. Bill, did you have anything you wanted to add before we go on to the next question? Uh, no, I think we have that one covered nicely. So integration capabilities are essential for most organizations looking to adopt new solutions. How deeply can you integrate EFAX corporate? So we we are partnered with many uh, EHRs, for example, in healthcare. Uh, Epic's a good example. Uh, you get outside of that, you talk about ERPs, we have SAP, uh, Oracle Next Suite, uh, Salesforce. So we have connectors with all the different types of CRMs, ERPs, and EHRs that make business run in an enterprise environment. We have that expertise. We have professional services to integrate. So it's really been something we've focused on, particularly as a lot of the faxing and the enterprise level is gone via API. It's out of applications or being received into applications. So we have a real expertise in, in these migrations, uh, in addition to our integrations. In addition to that, if it's something we haven't done before, we have a professional services team that can work with the software provider that is at our customer site uh, to do an integration. Yeah, it's definitely something that it can be as simple as a print to fax option being within the UI of a certain uh, program, or it could be as in depth as you know a larger system says, yes, we want to make our APIs available to eFax. We want to go ahead and you know create a launching place and a place to receive faxes within our software. Um, or it could be something that we handle that through dropping to shared network folders, uh, maybe some of those larger document management systems that sit in the middle of those large healthcare enterprises. Uh, you know, maybe they have the acute, the ambulatory, behavioral health, all needing to capture information and make it available across the enterprise. So we can facilitate that with faxing, make it available in a document management system, whether it be an API integration or a file drop. Uh, like as we mentioned before, you can start to talk about clarity uh, and our different options there. Uh, those can be things like Clarity CD, which is going to create that CCD attaching the fax information, allows the healthcare system to consume that in an automated fashion and not be an individual person touching every single record and finding out where every single piece of documentation has to go. Uh, we have clarity just in general, which would be much more of a robust customized offering, uh, maybe scanning invoices, maybe capturing other information, demographics, making things available to archive again in a final resting place or moving across the billing continuum. We also cover stuff around uh, prior authorizations and capturing that information. Again, all of this becomes discrete data, still maintaining that fax image. Or you may have an example where Bill, Tony, and Nick all went and saw the same doctor that week. And when the fax comes over to the hospital, it contains all three uh, of us in a single document. We can go ahead for auditing purposes and preserve that true fax that came in. And then we can also split it off into three individual faxes so that Tony's PHI and Nick's PHI never commingle with mine or each other. And it goes to a final rest within the organization. And it allows it to, to always ensure that we're giving them the information to take that fax, in, that fax forward. Uh, we're never going to create the accounts. We're never going to match the patient matching process. We're always going to let the native solution that the, the, the organization already built out to do that patient matching and decide where that information goes. Does it go to the record? Does it go to HIM because the patient doesn't exist? Likewise, if invoices are coming into an ERP system, uh, how are we going to go ahead and rationalize that and reconcile it to see you know, where it has to go? Well, the answer is we're not. All we're going to do is make that information available and we're going to make it a discrete format that's easy to consume in an automated fashion. 
And from there, you can start to explore all the different ways that you want to send and receive faxes uh, and into what level. So you're not handcuffed by uh, a large vendor in your ecosystem that won't expose an API integration with other options we have. But it also, too, allows that conversation to occur and something we're happy to support, like Nick mentioned a few minutes ago. Yeah, certainly integrations are the key to success when it comes to operational efficiencies and things working smoothly. I mean, for us, our, our challenges of our operational team is we have all these great ideas of what we want to do to create better workflows, but the integrations don't exist. And I think what you've done a really good job at is integrating with all the different technologies so that you can create a workflow that's highly efficient. And, and that's just not something that we've seen in other providers, quite frankly. Right. Yeah, I mean, especially if you start bringing a lot of these legacy systems together, you know, Hospital X buys Epic, goes out and acquires four clinics. Those four clinics are on four different EHRs and there's no bandwidth to make all those moves simultaneously. But you can start to create much better functionality and integration with the disparate systems they have or even help them through the system consolidation process to unify all the different things, all the different numbers, all the different technologies and workflows uh, to a single point within our AWS infrastructure. And like Nick mentioned before, we saw the need to even break into, um, you know, more break into, I should say, the federal space. So for our ECFAX, which is our FedRAMP offering, uh, it's in AWS GovCloud, and it's just another mechanism for the agencies that need, you know, a FIPS level encryption rather than AES with our commercial product. So both products can live and breathe in any environment, any vertical, uh, but we'll able to then tailor the offering and the expectation to the customer's needs. Well, the acquisition piece is something I didn't even consider. I mean, you, when you're out there and you have acquired several companies, the hardest thing is trying to integrate all those different services to make it function and work. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest, I and mean, we've seen that in telecom, right? In the telecom industry where, you know, Lumen, which was CenturyLink, had nine different systems that would swivel chair between because they couldn't integrate them. And and that's such a great point that if you are, if you have acquired companies, they have multiple systems, because of your level of integration, just makes that that whole thing work a lot smoother and a lot easier than you probably could have imagined. And, and just one less thing to worry about. Mm -hmm. Um let's talk about security a little bit here. Can you speak on the level of security EFAX provides as it relates to data privacy and compliance regulations? So as we've touched on on various questions, because it's so important, particularly when you read about the cybersecurity incidents we see regularly, some large, some smaller, particularly across healthcare and, and certainly some other verticals as well. So we became high trust certified. We were the first fax company to become high trust certified. So what does that mean? That means your data is encrypted at transit and rest. Uh, and in addition to that, there are other types of security procedures. We we sign BAAs with our customers in the healthcare world. Uh, we're, excuse me, GDPR compliant, uh, Sarbanes-Oxley, when those, as that touches on financial services. So we're always focused on protecting your PHI and PII. Uh, and as we've said multiple times, we are in, in the Fed Gov Cloud as well. So security and facts go hand in hand. It's, it's one of the reasons, by the way, facts is still so prevalent in healthcare because it is secure you know when the transmission has been received or not received. So we, we've just kept on building on that and adding the different types of security protocols and, and procedures we need to uh, to always keep our customers in the healthcare realm and other verticals uh, secure. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add to that, you know, beyond the certifications, whether it's the HIPAA high trust, PCI compliance, uh, just the ability within our system to designate users, sub-admins, to create groups and kind of silo an organization from a security standpoint. You know, HR has their own sub-admin and their own group within the organization for facts and likewise for payroll uh, in other areas. So we, we start to break down even under that cover of the security of all the things we've accomplished from a um, certification standpoint, but start bringing that into the, into the workflows, to the daily use, to how the organization admins its environment. Uh, and making things so that they're able to then report on it seamlessly, whether it's daily, weekly, or monthly. And one last thing to consider, you don't get high trust certified once. You do it, and then you go through an audit every year. One's a major, one's a minor uh, every other year. So this is a constant uh, this is constant work for our security team. You know, as employees here, we all uh, get seated with, with the spam and uh, different risks that we're all tasked to make sure that we don't 
uh, click on the wrong thing. And if you do, you have to take a class, things like that. I mean, this company is extremely focused on security to the point where I think uh, Tony, Bill, and I wish we didn't have to change passwords so frequently, but we certainly understand how important it is. So the focus is Absolutely. on security. Yeah, we saw an example. I, I think I read an article on a, a hospital in New York City that made a bit of an error and uh, accidentally sent a file to an employer versus an employee. And the cost of that was kind of mind blowing, $400,000 fine. And, uh, you know, security is scary enough as it is without fines. And, and they have those fines out there um, for anybody. I mean, our IT customers are, uh, you know, we tell them all the time, they have none of the headcount, none of the budget, but all of the responsibility. And, uh, you know, I think being able to sleep a little bit better at night, knowing that you've got a solution that's encrypted and as foolproof as uh, EFAX corporate is, um, is a huge benefit to anyone's um, product set that they're employing to do fax and compliance. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, Tom, you're going to add something to that? Well, I was just going to say it, and it kind of also goes back to when they, when the customer is providing their own infrastructure, you know, then they're the ones that really have to hold that liability to make sure that they've built all the appropriate security around, you know, their in-house solution. So when you talk about just high trust, you know, which is the gold standard in healthcare, when you're, you know, when you're a healthcare client, you go, I'm working with EFAX or high trust and we'll sign a BAA. That takes a lot off of their own internal audit stuff versus if they were trying to manage that stuff in house. So it, there's a lot of advantages to us bearing the weight, right? That's why how we're really truly a full, you know, software as a service provider. The overarching one thing to say, Robert, we this is our core competency. This is what we do every day. I've been here 20 years. I think the company was five years longer. I came in after about five years. It's all we do. This is we do secure document exchange. It was founded as a fax company. We have, you know, have other technologies, but overwhelmingly this is a fax company right on what are some of the potential risks when the exchange of data isn't shared securely so you've touched on it to a degree rob with the fines and four hundred thousand. actually if you're getting is light if you consider some of the healthcare, uh cybersecurity incidents whatever where four hundred thousand dollars is low they're, they're paying a lot more there's not just the financial impact. Of course, there's the patient impact. There's reputational risk. You know, depending on the size of the organization, things like this can, can put people out of business. So, you know, Tony mentioned again, we'll sign a business associates agreement. You've got specific protections in there, you know, timelines in which we need there needs to be notification for breaches, things like that. That all goes away. You have a, you know, you're getting an audit, security audit on your systems. Well, when it comes to the fax piece, you just point them to us. It really takes a piece off their plate. And fax is how patient records, and I know we're focusing on healthcare quite a bit because it is where we see most of the faxing these days. It's patient records, it's prior authorizations, it's so it's revenue impacting, it's patient impacting. Technology like this is something you really want to have sitting in the cloud, managed by people, that's all they do. I can tell you, I've been on many calls where I have IT people telling me that they are literally calling doctor's offices and asking them if they can turn error correction mode off so they complete fax transmissions. IT resources should not be calling individual doctor's offices to turn on and off error correction mode and fax. All this goes away, it sits in our cloud, this is what we do. Absolutely. Anybody else? No, I think, I mean, here it's, you know, the potential risks, the alleviation, the creation of workflows, making this something that is electronic. It's not walking up to a fax machine and punching in and all of a sudden, up oh, your thumb hit the zero instead of the seven. And, you know, it's a common thing, the age old, age old adage that my PHI landed on the mechanics fax machine down the street because we're one number apart. Um, things like that. You start to take a, you make the, the sending and, and receiving of faxes more bulletproof with all the security we're talking about. But then on the sending as well, if you do have one of those things where it's a common occurrence, unfortunately, the, the, you know, faxes land uh, at the incorrect des destination, you can start to make a lot more of that streamline with the usage of address books, uh, you know, number blocking, things like that. It, it's allowing you to put 
a lot in front of the human error that occurs today uh, with whether it be premise based or walking up to a legacy fax machine. So along with all the ways that we cover from the security standpoint is also ways that you're able to bulletproof um, as much as you can the end user experience and how he or she is sending out um, those documents to the correct uh, receiving entity. Yeah, so Nick, what are some of the things you've seen in the past 20 years uh, that have occurred as a result of this? I mean, what kind of what kind of examples can you give us that maybe people don't realize are, are risks, right? Uh, is there any examples you can think of that are not always realized by our clients when it comes well, to The facts landing at the wrong location, uh, the wrong person seeing it. Uh, sure. A technology company that, uh, you know, had a cyber attack. Uh, and what bailed them out was facts, because that's one thing they could still use. Uh, it's just the facts is ending up in the wrong place, uh, or the loss of the facts service in a clinical environment on a weekend. Faxes are not coming into a multifunction device or to a standalone fax machine. Those type of things go away. You know, we're we're high availability, twenty four by seven support. So those type of issues go away. So it is, I think what you see mostly people that lose fax capabilities uh, and lose the ability to treat patients, the ability to uh, process insurance claims, which is revenue impacting. That's what we see most being out of business. If your fax isn't working, we take that risk away. Yeah. And if you're using a, a premise-based server today, um, <laughs> And all of a sudden, your sprinkler system goes off, or a pipe bursts. Um, there's a number of things. A fire. You know, you're 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 kind of stuck, right? You can't just move everybody to a home home location. Where with EFAX, you certainly do have that mobility benefit of being able, from a business continuity standpoint, continue your business despite the fact that your office is in a shambles right now. Yeah, and it's surprising, Rob, the amount of organizations that are running fax servers but have no redundancy. Or if they do, it's in a location three miles away that's on the same power grid. The uh, the budget for redundancy is usually zero until there's a problem, and then it goes to a right. thousand, and it goes back down to zero as soon as it's over. Tony, yeah. did you and, want to add something? I saw Tony raise his hand. No, no, I was just laughing at what Nick was saying. <laughs> Anybody else? Great. Not on this topic. This is, uh, you know, obviously we, we're, we're coming up on a recession. Things are slowing down. Companies are laying off. There's there's less budgets. There's less headcount. So efficiencies become very, very important for all, all of our clients, right? How can consensus cloud solutions improve workflows and those efficiencies I just mentioned? So we, we've touched on, and I'll let Bill speak to it in greater detail because he's real expertise in this, this piece of the business, uh, consensus clarity. It's the data extraction piece. So I can tell you, I have a very large customer right now that's in the process of moving into a custom solution where they're processing hundreds of thousands of documents manually, daily, and manually rekeying information. They have five people doing this, and they're SLAs to the business. Right. So they have to be concerned about people taking vacation, people calling in sick. Uh, the fact that, you know, they take lunch. We never take lunch with the consensus clarity product. Right. Uh, the fact that their error rate will often be higher with a manual process. So the ability to redeploy those resources to do other more productive jobs and to move that to consensus clarity and have us do the extraction is a huge improvement of workflow and it's a real cost saver. So I, it, I think uh, we typically can process a five page document in, in 30 seconds. A, a person's going to take closer to 10 minutes to do that. Well, so, I know in the legal industry, mm -hmm. the biggest challenge on TDM is how many faxes don't go through. Right. And we run through, I remember at Exo uh, Communications, we had a, for T38, we had something like a 28 or 18 step process to try to fix that. So the faxes will go through, but ultimately it was nonstop trouble tickets and, and, and law firms seem to have the most problems because they have small text, long pages, multiple pages, and they just don't come through accurately. Um, so I can, I can see where that can definitely help the workflow of a healthcare organization, a financial organization, anywhere where there's a lot of documents, a lot of text, multiple pages, right? So 
Then and Rob, you, I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, legal's near and dear to my heart. I mean, I've been in that space or selling into that space for most of those 40 years. And they do a lot of international as well. And that's something else to touch on. You know, we've got the network to send faxes globally, right? We can change paths if we need to. I can tell you a lot of the large law firms I work with, particularly internationally, because they say uh, Asia PAC in particular, they don't trust email. So everything had to go fax. So it was important to them to have a solution that could deliver faxes uh, at a very high level um, and a, a very high completion rate. And, you know, lawyers want their faxes when they want their faxes. And they're a 24 by 7 business. You're working on an M&A deal. You know, that's not 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. So we are intimately, me in particular, intimately aware of how law firms work. Uh, and, and what they need. So although we focus so much on healthcare, we really do have expertise in there and financial services as well. I mean, I built fax solutions for very large financial services organizations back in the day when the fax machine sat in a cage. I could only be accessed by one person. So we had all sorts of different technologies to deliver faxes to compliance officers and email, as well as deliver it as a fax to the end user. So there's a lot we've seen here, me in particular, and uh, always excited to, to work with your customers and see how we can improve their workflows. Indeed. All right, Bill, you're supposed to answer that question. I guess you can jump in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I, you know, I'm at a, at a loss at what to add, but I mean, it really is. It's one of those things that it's that age old adage of, you know, picture the facts being the Frisbee that bounces off the wall. It's great that the data made it to the, where it has to go, but it never makes it in because it has to be manually keyed in. It will make it in, but it might make it in the next day, depending upon, you know, when the work hours of that team are. Or maybe there are 15 people that are trying to do the work of just making the data available to a clinician or to a finance analyst or wherever that, that final rest is. Um, ultimately, also, too, you may have information, like I said before, for different patients or different customers uh, commingled into one fax document because they just felt it was easier that way to generate uh, you know five different patients or five different companies invoices into a single pdf we start to break that down making it consumable we start walking through the workflows that organizations see every day it's just how do we capture that data you know rob i think earlier in the conversation you had mentioned you know that swivel chair mentality where maybe it's the hospital ehr or the finance system and then the radiologist is over here looking at the documents to or images rather to create their report but they don't have the information flowing over maybe patient's age, race, um, other things that are pertinent to diagnosis. And if that information is just sitting in a fax outside, you know, outside the uh, setting of care or it's sitting in a document management system, you know, you're not always going to get those clinicians to, to go over, log into another system, mm -hmm. pull up the information and verify it. Um, you know, you want to hope that the information is readily available at their fingertips so that they can also pull it in. Uh, and again, a lot of what we're doing is just making the doc, the, excuse me, the information available. Uh, it still has to go through a reconciliation process. You know, it will go into final rest. They'll be auditing and tracking both on the EHR and also within our system, what we do with every inbound fax, what, what data we pass and where we pat, but, you know, passed it to. But you start really breaking down to, okay, well, just because we've made something discreetly available doesn't mean it's gospel, doesn't mean it's accurate. It may have been from an older provider that had legacy information. So there's still clinical reconciliation processes that go on at the point of care at the bedside to make sure the information being pulled in should be there. Um, so it's definitely not replacing the human. It's just actually taking away the burden of making all that same information available to the teams that then have to reconcile it. Um, so it's much more bulletproof in that regard. And we go through a whole host of uh, document training, looking at, you know, where things live. Doesn't always need to be first name on the first page in the left corner every time. The technology is robust enough to go ahead and find that information each time within, you know, the different formats that it's going to be presented. So if you think about a catch-all, yeah, it's great that we can send something to a shared network folder and Mary and HIM or Bob and finance can then open it up, figure out who it is, look it up. Oh, the name was spelled wrong on the document. I think it's this one or maybe it's that one. A lot of that gets taken out of the mix as you start to look at making different data elements available to then support the matching criteria. Yeah, I think one of the things that you do probably better than anyone is on the workflow side that I've seen is that a lot of our clients have a process they've used for years. We've always done it this way. We're very happy with it. And sure, you can you can replace that and have it work the same way, but you know, put everything in the cloud. But I think where your value really comes in um, is 
re-engineering some of those processes and making those workflows more efficient. And I, I, I think that's a, a key component of what you do. And it takes someone with 20 years experience probably to do that. Uh, but I think that's a that's a big benefit of working with EFACS corporate is that that ability to re-engineer and rethink a process to make it even more efficient than they thought was possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rob, the nice thing is, is that you don't, it's cloud, right? So it's not need, like we need to show up uh, six months later with a piece of hardware to bolt on in order to use consensus clarity. So as I said before, we lift it up, we move it to the cloud, and then let's talk to the business and understand that life of the facts and where it ends up and what would they like to see work better and how can we accommodate them with clarity or other solutions? For example, uh, Tony touched on it. We could take a fax and convert it to a secure direct messaging, which any certified EA, 2015 EHR has to be able to consume. So now suddenly we're going to drop it into the EHR as a secure direct message with or without consensus clarity. So there's a lot we can do uh, to really improve workflows. And the, the best thing we can do is we listen to your customers. We ask a lot of questions and we understand what their workflows are. And then we can, we can recommend solutions because it's what's important to them, what the end result they're looking for. That's what we want to focus on. And we'll certainly try and guide them and give them best practices with what we've seen in other healthcare organizations, financial services organizations, legal organizations, but ultimately it's the customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we try to add as much more impact as we can with the data. I mean, especially now in the hybrid 100% remote world that we've created for different offices, you know, just being on, you know, within the four walls of an organization to manage that infrastructure, um, to, you know, make sure things, what, what failed and why, or the users that are, uh, are handcuffed, but how they can send information or what information they can receive because they're in a remote setting. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that that being in the cloud, that's what it's intended for. It's intended to be anyone, anywhere, anytime. So you're able to touch on all those areas and all those workflows, no matter where the person actually sits on a day-to-day -day basis. Fantastic. Yeah, and I think in the end too, I mean, the improving patient outcomes is a big result of this, you know, where time and, you know, human resources, you know, might be a preventative to someone getting expedited healthcare that they need, right? That problem goes away. You know, hospitals get paid faster by the payers. The patients are getting their healthcare more quickly. I mean, that's just, that's a really cool outcome of all this minus just the technology bit. Right, and you know, Tony, it's a great point. And another point to consider, Rob, we touched on what are the some of the penalties for uh, security breaches. Well, there are also penalties if you're in the world of Medicare and Medicaid with response times, right? There's a certain amount of time you have to respond to a prior authorization if it's listed as urgent. So we help meet those deadlines with things like consensus clarity. We can pick up urgent on a document. By the way, it could be handwritten. It could be upside down. It could be a doctor's handwriting. It could be my handwriting, which is, I should have been a doctor because my handwriting is worse than anybody's I've ever seen. So these are the type of things that that will also impact revenue, patient outcomes, and of course, eliminate some of those fines. No, I think they get it. I mean, the customers we've spoken to very quickly wanted to set up an appointment to meet and discuss solutions. Uh, it was not hard to, uh, to find uh, internal clients that would want to talk to you. So there's definitely some challenges out there. And I didn't realize the, the government side of it. That's, uh, that's enlightening to hear about that. Um, when customers migrate to CloudFax, we talked a little bit about how we can help audit earlier um, and, and actually provide the budget for this. But can they see a uh, return on investment typically? What do you They expect? do. So it's all cloud. So there's no capital expenditure here. You're paying for usage. Yeah. Yep. It, it's usage-based, right? So we talked about redundancy and how a lot of people don't have redundancy, but they do. But when you factor in... Uh, the hardware, the software, software maintenance, telecom expenses, the fact they should have a redundant solution. And then, of course, time spent from an, an IT department who has to manage it, uh, who handles trouble tickets, like things like that. There is an impressive ROI to move to the cloud. Yeah, I've, I've been here 20 years. And one point I also wanted to make was this is one of the first technologies that organizations started to move to the cloud. Because 20 years ago, cloud was still, well, do I really want to? start putting some of my my applications in the cloud. Fax was one of the first ones. Now it is so common. I was listening to uh, 
Bloomberg this morning and SAP, their CFO got on. They had fantastic earnings, most of it driven by moving their customers that were on-prem with SAP and moving them to the cloud. So it is obviously the digital transformation is well on the way. And cloudifying facts is really, for those that haven't done it, is really a great direction to go in. Yeah, the budgetary pressures are such now that most IT departments are looking at anything that's maintenance and trying to find ways to outsource that, to manage services, to move those people into more strategic roles where they bring more value. Um, I, geez, I, I really hope none of our clients are still doing this the manual way. Uh, but if they are, you can certainly contact us at the end of this meeting. We'll provide some contact info where you can uh, arrange to meet with Nick, Tony, or Bill and talk about a solution. Uh, Tony and Bill, do you have anything you wanted to add on the ROI side of things? I didn't. No. Yeah, I mean, I think, no, I think from my side, yeah, I mean, what Nick said is best. I mean, you know, there's no capital expense. You, you know, we talk to a lot of customers and we say, hey, we're, you know, 100% cloud hosted AWS. There's one time you might want to put something behind the firewall, a very lightweight appliance to help, you know, call it the traffic cop to help direct a lot of that. And a lot of organizations even throw their arms up and say, we don't want that. We want that to be in the cloud too, where we don't want to own anything on-prem. Uh, they've consolidated their analog lines. They've moved to us. They've decommissioned the legacy fax server or servers. Uh, some of those large organizations, you'll find out that Bob and accounting and Harry and finance both uh, went out and bought their own device, you know, their own fax servers, or they've enlisted a fleet from a Lexmark or a Xerox in leveraging those for faxes with the analog lines attached. There's so much consolidation that goes on uh, in decommissioning, which then leads to no more future capital expense, you know, things like Microsoft patches, Windows updates, uh, just new VMs in general. You're looking to shrink that footprint, not grow it. And that, along with all the TDM infrastructure we talked about today, um, it's all going to ring true. And then you have the options to start dealing with more discrete data and you start looking to make your FTEs, you know, really do what they're designed to do when they went to school for what they wanted to do. Um, a long time finance person may still spend two hours of their morning entering uh, invoice numbers and totals. Uh, we could take that off their plate. It's being faxed to them. It gets put on their desk in their little bin and come in in the morning with your coffee and you know you're going to keystroke in, you know, 800 uh, invoice numbers with the associated uh, cost to them where we can start to scan those documents, take a lot of that burden away. So when they're sitting down, they're actually gonna deal with the data in the system already. So it's not something that they need to make sure they did it and they did it right. It's there and it's ready for them. And all those things bring down the time, which bring down the dollars. Well, there's certainly a lot of soft cost savings and efficiencies here, but what about the hard cost? What can the typical client expect to save just by moving from a traditional premise or multi, multi uh, you know, use device over to an EFAX corporate solution? Is there a number that they should expect? There's a lot of variables depending on, you know, how they currently have their infrastructure. I would say it's not unreasonable to say you're going to realize about at least 25% savings. Uh, yeah. And it can be north say of that. It really depends on yeah. how they have their, their solution built out currently. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, you're talking, I mean, the telecom alone, you talk about 100 fax lines, going from 75, 80 plus dollars each on the, the hopeful side, that's what your cost is today. And bringing that down to a few dollars per line, uh, to, you know, multiple telco redundancy on the back end. You're not worried about a lot of the things you were worried about before. Uh, you know, we manage all that process and that right there, the ability to integrate with certain devices or already integrated with certain devices takes the burden of workflows off. So there's an immediate ROI and benefit. But like Nick said at the start of the call, we want to lift up what's there, bring it to the cloud, move it forward. But along the way, we want to be cognizant of when we can start to enhance workflows, make those suggestions or make those recommendations or satisfy the wants of what, you know, a, a well-educated customer has already done for his or her diligence to say, this is what I need and this is how. Show me the savings and show me the path. And I think that that's something that we've done year over year. Uh, as Nick mentioned, it was 4 billion pages that we transmitted last year. So uh, I think we're doing something right here and we're going to continue to do so. Yeah. And we'll do a better job. I mean, last point I want to make, we'll do a better job. This is our core competency. And even mm -hmm. if they do have a redundant solution, it's not going to match the redundancy we have. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, you know, at the top of this call, we talked a lot about what we do at Technology Source. And we, we try to look for ways to reduce operational expenses for our clients. We look for ways to improve operational efficiencies streamline their business, and, and then ultimately improve the experience of their customers. 
That's a, that's a big part of it. And if I look at EFAX corporate and this product and its team, what I see is really checking all three boxes, right? Being able to deliver that type of experience to our clients uh, with a company like EFAX. And it's been, it's been great to work with you guys and the support you've shown our, our customers, the expertise you bring to the table. It, it just, it, it's really a pleasure to work with uh, the organization. And I, I want to thank you for taking the time to spend with us today. Uh, we will be posting this up on YouTube. Hopefully you get an opportunity to, to see how great you were. But if you need some help, you're looking to discuss a solution with EFAX Corporate, you can reach out to me at rob.o at technologysource.com and I'll go to work to organize uh, a meeting with the experts from EFAX. So I want to thank everyone for joining us today at the Technology Source Virtual Roundtable. Look for our next meeting coming up next month. We'll see you then. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Take care.